baby bit. I'm acting like I'm too cute in the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. I remember back in the day, it didn't matter how pretty the hair was when they came in. They just had a fresh pearl or two, they leave out look like afro. Because they didn't care how they look. Oh, no, I wish I had a few of y'all. Nowadays, we got cute folk, cute praises, got the cute dress on, the cute purse, and you act like you don't want to give God praise. God is working in the Bible. Feel it in your head. Then you can feel it in 
the Lord. Praise you the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him where first? Say in the what? Firmament of his power. Go back. Oh, in his sanctuary. Mm. Sanctuary is a place. Yes, it is. We're in the sanctuary right now. Yes, yes, and people say you, you're just supposed to praise God at home because you are. Because the Bible says praise Him in the sanctuary. Yes. 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 Is it right there? Oh Lord, I wish I had somebody. Yes. Yes. I'm teaching a lesson about what the church is and where it's at. We know that we are the church, but there yes. is a place where the church is taken. Yes. The church is placed in the sanctuary. Yes. Yes. Lord, have mercy. Read, huh? Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Uh -huh. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Uh -huh. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Uh -huh. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him. Uh -huh. Praise him with the temple and dance. Praise him, praise him with the temple and dance. That's the tambourine and the dance with your feet. Uh -huh. Praise him with strength instruments. Organs. Now, they have churches that they say you're not supposed to play music in the church. Mm. Oh, yes. But the Bible says to praise them with these instruments. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Yes. Read. Praise them upon the loud harp. Wait. Plays them upon the what? Loud symbol. He got no quiet symbol. Come on. Yes. He wants to be loud. Yes. 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 And the Bible says he's a high God, so he's high, so we gotta make a sound to reach him. Yes. Uh, read, uh huh. Praise him upon the high sounding symbols. Not only did he say I wanted to be loud, but he said I wanted to be high. Because the louder it is, the higher it can reach. Yes. Read. Let everything. Let everything. That hath breath. Uh huh. Praise the Lord. Uh huh. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So God don't want, he don't like quietness. Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. Because when you go to a you go to a party or to the club, they don't that, that DJ ain't worried about busting those speakers or nothing. No party. I ain't been to no party before. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The party be loud. It be so loud that the floor be shaking. Yes, oh my God. God. And if you was anything like me, I wasn't on the floor. I was on the wall. Right, and on the wall. If the music real loud, it causes the wall to bounce. Yeah. Right. So the music was so loud in the devil's camp. My God. And everybody was screaming and dancing and acting crazy. It still is. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to God's house, come on, man. all right now. People get quiet. Right, man. Football games louder than the church. Yes. I'm talking about the people. Uh -huh. come on. Basketball games louder than the church. Well, they said nothing. Yeah. Baseball game, hockey game, wrestling. All the, how the wrestling arena, people in there fighting, knocking each other's head off, everybody screaming. <laughs> but we got a king that already won. Nobody screaming. Hey. We got a king that already got the trophy. Nobody screaming. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the best opportunity when somebody said, well, let's give God some praise. That should be the opportunity. You know how the stadium sound? That's supposed to be, that, that's supposed to be a stadium sounding time. But we get an eye out so pretty. We can't let the world outdo us. Yes, yes. Yes. There's no way in the world that uh, Club Reno down the road, oh uh, Club, Club Corn out here, they should not be louder than the church when they're gathered. Yes. They out there praising the devil. We ought to praise God. That's right. And we should do it even more louder. We should get more radical. Yes. And some people are like, well, I'm not a yeller, I'm not a screamer, I'm not, yeah, you used to be. When it was your song, you screamed. Come on. Come on, let's play a song. I don't feel worse now. Oh, I, 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 we're going to sing that, and then you sing louder than the music in the, uh, at the club. But now, see, and then the Bible says, make a joy for what? Noise. Noise. Unto who? Lord. So it should not matter. Hallelujah. Some people say, well, I don't sound that good. Just shout hallelujah. It don't matter how it sounds. God like noise. Amen. 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 I'm glad I'm a part of the noisy bunch. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. So 
We'll try it again. Let's give our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ a hand. <laughs>
Say it again because somebody missed it. The Lord show me me challenge. Everybody got so many challenges on Facebook. We need a, a challenge that's called Lord show me me. My God. Amen. 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 We look at so many different avenues and different things in our lives. And to be completely honest, church folk can be very, very judgmental to people. Yes, amen. 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 It's going to be a tight one. Y'all about to get hold on to the seats. Church folks can be in a position where they are very judgmental and their thought process processes against people is always negative. Amen. Like we've never been there before. The thing about church folk is that they forgot what their testimony was. Yes. Church folk forget that they used to be out there in the club. Yes, sir. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. Church folk forget that they used to be blowing those trees. Oh, no, y'all ain't saying that. Church folk forget that they were whoremongers in and, and running with those in that aspect. Church folk forget those things because once they get filled with the Holy Ghost and, and they get baptized in Jesus' name, set up as the apostles, doctrine, they call themselves apostolic, they change their dress code and all these different things. And then when others come in, they look at them like they wasn't there. Lord, I, I feel it now. I'm going to get it back. I feel like it's going to be a little tight in it. It's going to be all right. Amen. We, we forget where we come from and we look at everybody else like they're wrong, like we've never been wrong before. This is the hour not for you to be looking at somebody else. But Lord, show me who I am. Amen. Wish I could reach mind your own business, but I, that's not the case. That'll be the. <laughs> Amen. If I do part two of this, we need to figure out how in the world can I focus on myself and stop looking. See, we'll get a microscope and look at everybody else and don't even look in the mirror. And then have the audacity to talk about somebody that's in a condition that you was in. Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to get much up today. You know, we need to figure out how to get it. And I can tell the ones that don't seek God. See, what happens is when you seek God, you start to see how ugly you really are. When you start getting in the presence of God and falling down on your face and seeking the face of God, you start to find out how many flaws you have and not nobody else. Yeah. Yeah. But the problem is we're not seeking God, we're seeking others' flaws. Yeah. Oh, that was, I got the ring on this one. Yeah. I know I'm talking right, it's just start pouring back. Watch this. I want you to go to the book of Psalms. Chapter 26. And can I tell you something? It don't matter how long you in the church, you got some ways that you still need to correct. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, Lord. See, self-righteous will tell you that you do everything right. Uh -oh. When you're self-righteous, you feel like you got everything all together. That's true. You don't have any issues. You don't have anything that you need to work on. The Bible says you got your own lust that you deal with. Oh, Lord. That's what the book said. Can I give it to you right now? So let's go to James real quick. Let's see if James said it. Is it James? I think that's right. All right. 
things. Hallelujah. James chapter 2. I'm sorry, chapter 1. And verse number 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own love. Oh, oh. The Bible says that man has his own what? Love. Man has his own issues that he has to deal with. So if I got my own issues to deal with, I'm not worried about your issues that you deal with. Can I go say, brother? Now I'm not worried about telling somebody what you got going on. It's going to be real tight here in a second. Because what your folks do is they look at everybody else's problems and try to expose people like they ain't got their own stuff going on. Oh, did you see sister such and such? And you know she wasn't supposed to be over there like that. But where you was at last week? Y'all ain't, ain't saying that. Sometimes we get so self-righteous to where we're not asking God to deliver us from ourselves. See, some people's problem is not delivering from demons and devils. They need to be delivered from themselves. They need to be delivered from you. Oh, lift your hand and say, Lord, please help me. Lord, please help me. Y'all said that song like I ain't going to say it. Look around, Lord, please help me. You don't want nobody to know you got problems then. That's the church, that's church people's problem is that they don't want anybody, and they don't even tell the pastor what they're dealing with, what they're struggling with, the man that can help them. I don't know, I can just do it on my own, I can do it by myself, but you can't. You need somebody to be able to give you some instructions on how to deal with that foolishness that you got going on with yourself. Because you're not going to be able to instruct you on how to do what to do with you. Because if that was the case, you would have been done something with yourself. That's right. But every time you try to fix it by yourself, you keep failing because you can't fix it by yourself. Amen. 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 Everybody says nothing, baby. Well, this must be a good one here. Amen. Amen. Psalm 26. And verse number one, uh huh? Judge me, O oh Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Uh -huh. Examine me, O oh Lord. Examine me. And prove me. And prove me. Try my reins and my heart. Try my reins and my heart. So he's saying, Lord, I want you to try the inner part of me. Yes. My inner issues, I want you to try them and see if they're right. Yes. How many of y'all, when y'all go down in prayer, instead of asking God for the release your stimulus check, and God release these and all these finances, and God, I, oh Lord, I must have stepped on the road. And God, release all this wealth, and release my husband, release my wife, release all... When have you took the time to say, Lord, show me who I am so I can fix my problems and issues that's going on within me? Yes. Oh, Jesus, I need you. I ain't got much money right now, but Lord, when you going to send the stimulus money? I just need a little bit of help. Where, where to check it? Everybody talking about they got it, and they got it already. I got well smart. Anybody get your stuff? You need to start to focus on how to get your life right with God. Some folks done blew that money before it got in the Lord, show me me. I need to figure out how to fix the issues that I have in my life so I can stop focusing on everybody else's problems. Don't you know people that have problems with themselves always point the finger at somebody else? Yes, sir. You know why? Because they want to get the heat off of them. 
Y'all ain't like saying, oh, did you see Sister Sun and Sun? And it'd be the same, listen, they talk about the same thing that they did. That's the part that they magnify. They magnify the same issue that they had because they're trying to get the heat off of them. Don't get the heat off of that way. Get close with God because He's a consuming fire. It'll burn off. We got somebody that said, I need the Lord to show me who I really am. Can I be honest with you? The average person don't know who they are. The average person do not know who they are. The average person has identified themselves by somebody else. Oh, Pastor, what do you mean by that? They have emulated behaviors of certain athletes, emulated behaviors of certain art, some certain rappers and certain stars to where they have never been their own identity. This is why you can't find out who you really are because you're everybody else. You mark on Wednesday, Jamie Foxx on Tuesday, Kevin Garnett on Wednesday. Are y'all ain't saying nothing? Eddie Murphy on Friday. See, what happened? I'm gonna tell you something now. When you when, when you when you have a problem, when you when you're in the end a problem where I'm gonna take it out. Thank you, Mom. I'm about to try to look out for you. When you have Sometimes you watch so many different people and because you can't really identify who you are, you take on their character. Amen. Right. So you take on the nature of somebody else. You can't even, you don't even know who you really are. Ask somebody, say, who are you? People don't know. Just think about it. You think right now, they say, well, who, who is they who is, Who is friends? Who is the enemy? How would you tell somebody who you are? Do you even know who you are? But because people have become everybody else, they don't know who they are, so God can't really show you who you are because you never knew who you are. Who am I? Who, 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 who am I? Who? Who, who just like just like Jesus was down there and said, who is man said that I am? Want to find out what people, who are you? Who are you identified with? Yes. See, people, they are so caught up with going with the Joneses to be identified with a group. Amen. And not identified by person. There's a difference being identified by group and identified by person. Some people are only known by a group of people that they're with. But when they're by themselves, they're nobody. Because they don't know who they are. How do I find out who I really am? Where am I? I mean, what what is this? What why am I here today? What is this life that I'm living? Why am I trying to live? We need to know all these different things about ourselves. Why? Everybody thinking, huh? <laughs> I need God to show me who I am, but I need to find out who I am before I try to get God to show me who I am. Amen. Got to get in a place where we're not concerned about everything and everyone else and start focusing. And now, just by the sound of it, a lot of you really don't know who you are. So now it's the thought process is sinking in. So now you really need to focus on self-identity. Because when you were younger, you wanted to be like your big brother. You wanted to be like your big sister. You wanted to be like your next door neighbor. Or you watched basketball, so you wanted to be like that basketball person. Amen. Amen. You used to watch this certain person on TV, so you wanted to be like him. So you lost your true identity. See, when you're not comfortable with who you are, you try to find other people to be like. Amen. 
So I never knew who I was, and even if I thought I knew who I was, I wasn't comfortable because I wasn't getting all the likes. Everybody didn't like me like that. So then I had to change to become the class clown and imitate Martin Lawrence and all these different people so that people could say something to me because it felt like I was a nobody. Because I didn't know who I was. So I need to figure out really who I am before God can really show me who I am. Because we can be in a place to where we're crying out and God is showing us who we are. But we can't see it because it's somebody else. All I'm familiar with is who I was trying to be like. Trying to be like Mike. Trying to be like this person, trying to be like that person, but I've never really got a true identity of who I really am. So I can't fix me until I get to know who I am. Mm, that's good. Favorite color used to be yellow, but because nobody really liked yellow, and your homegirl said her favorite color is green, so now you're green. <laughs> you want a green team now, you left yellow alone. Because nobody else like him. That's how people think. Amen. Amen. I don't eat this, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> Go eat chicken. Probably the last is. <laughs> I ain't going to talk about y'all. Right? So if you. People start saying it's disgusting and nasty and that's atrocious. And then your best friend say her, her favorite food is, you know, uh, uh, steak fries from wherever. You change from eating chitlins to doing this because of somebody else's thoughts or opinions. So you change because the person is who they are. Um, Think about it. Since, we, since you were a child, who were you and who were you trying to be like? Did your behaviors change according to what you saw on TV? A lot of times you have an identity problem growing up. I had an identity problem growing up. I used to try to, I watched Alan Iverson almost every day to try to master his moves and crossovers. When I had got my hair long, got braids in my hair, that wasn't me. I was trying to be somebody else. Amen. Amen. And then, you know, I come from a, a family of clowns. Everybody liked to grow, so I, I watch a lot of Martin. So I started learning how to roll, and I became this funny guy based off of me not knowing who I was. So I wanted to be a, a, a clown in the class, and I wanted to play basketball. Not based off of who I was, it was based off of what I saw because I wasn't comfortable of who I was. A lot of people have identity crisis because they're not comfortable of who they are. Yeah. You battle every day because you're not confident in yourself, so you want to try to make yourself look like somebody that you're not. Wow. Yeah. Ooh, Lord, it's, it's quiet. It's tough, you hear feathers fall. <laughs> we got to get to a place, and all this, this stems from low confidence, low self-esteem, or even no confidence and no self-esteem. That's true. Jesus. Because all of those things, it causes you to become someone that you're not. Wow. Yes. Somebody else shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we try to be all of these different things to where now God can't even really show us who we are. Because we never knew. Jesus. Hey, thank y'all with me. Yeah. This thing must be heavy. Yeah. Go to the book. Hallelujah. Of First Corinthians, chapter eleven. 
That's the Lord show me me challenge. First thing you ought to do is find out who you really are so God can show you who you are. And could I tell you that it's not just you all here, but this is a global issue. It's a global issue. People don't like how they look. People don't, especially our people, they don't like the hair, your hair is curly and, and you know, what we gonna call them nappy, what we call them nappy, it's all right. Nappy, remember they start coming out, how can you be nappy? What's wrong with that? That's your hair. Love your hair. If that's how God made you, and God, all these, everybody, everybody's not the same shade, complexion, and some people are upset that they're not light-skinned or they're not fair-skinned. Enjoy who God made you. Right, sir. I've never heard this before, but my baby girl, she's so funny. She's the lightest of all of us, all of my kids. And she said, I heard her talking to her brother when I was out there the other day. She said, I, I got to keep staying outside because I, I got to get darker. I want to be darker. I want to be, I want to I wanna look like Daddy and Eli and Janiah. I, I just want to be darker. And, and she didn't know that. She wasn't saying it to me. She was, I don't know who she was talking to, really. I think she was talking to her brother. When I heard it, I was listening. I said, I never heard anybody say that before. <laughs> She wants to be associated with the majority, right? And that's how people are. And, and she's only, she'll be, uh, she'll be eight. <laughs> she'll be eight next week. So for her to already be thinking in her mind, I need to try to look like this. I need to try to look like that. That's how I start. Yeah, Young age. She's not being fed in her daily. And every time I talk to her, y'all know I call my kids beautiful, all my daughters, and they baby, they, they pretty girl, all stuff like that, so that they can understand that they're beautiful so they can be confident in what they are. Right. And a lot of times, globally, the world has portrayed what is beautiful and what's not. Globally, there is a certain image of what is nice looking and what's not. But everybody is nice looking in their own way. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. And you should be comfortable in who you are. That's right. I don't know why I'm talking about this today, but That's some right. people need to be comfortable in, in who they are. Amen. You don't have to look like Becky to be cute. Amen, sir. Oh, yeah, Talk about Amen. it, sir. You might as well be happy. And what God made you, how God made you, how God created you. So then God can really show you who you are. But you gotta identify yourself first. Amen. 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 Alright, where I got you at? First Corinthians 11. And verse number 39. I love you. All right. Oh, um, what did I say? For the wrong All right. Second Corinthians 11. All right. What do I need? I think I need the wrong Yes, sir. Uh, go through 11 and start at 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, 28. but let a man examine himself. One thing that men have to start doing is self-examination. And when you look at the word exams, a lot of times you get those where? In school. So you have a test based upon what you've learned. You can't do a self-examination if you haven't learned anything about self. I can't do a self-examination if I haven't learned who self is. Amen. 
Now read the 31st verse, huh? For if we would judge ourselves. If we would start judging ourselves. We need to start judging who? Ourselves. Ourselves. Stop worrying about who's sitting beside you, how they look, what they got on, and worry about what you look like and what you got going on because you don't even know who you are and try to cast judgment on somebody else. Amen. How you gonna know who somebody else is but you don't know who you are? You can tell stories about everybody else. Amen. But don't know nothing about yourself. Amen. You don't have a clue about who you really are. But you talk about everybody else. Oh, sister such I know she do this, she did that, 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 that. You know her whole body, but you don't even know yours. <laughs> taking some self-examination, looking at ourselves, learning yourself so you can look at yourself and identify the things that need to be corrected in your life. Amen. People don't like to take correction, but they want to be the corrector. Yeah. Everybody want to correct. Everybody want to tell their person what you do. Well, you need to do that. Well, you, you need to do that. And all that's wild me. You tell somebody to look a certain way, and you, you look, you, you know, you try to teach somebody how to look, and you dress off. How you gonna try to dress somebody you want to dress? Jesus, Oh, that's quiet. Y'all all right with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Does it make sense tonight? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Trying to teach people how to do certain things, but we have it. Master those things to teach. You should be able to exemplify. If you're going to teach somebody something short, by what you do. See, can I tell you something? Your behavior speaks for you. The way you look speaks for you. The way you, hallelujah, carry yourself, it speaks for you. Ten years ago, when I was a general manager of a restaurant, Everybody thought that I'm the age now when I was dead. And I didn't say a word. The way I carried myself. He said, man, you how old are you? What you about 33, 32? I said, no. And back then I wouldn't tell my age. Because I was younger than everybody. I was, I was 20, 22 years old, running a whole million dollar restaurant. And all of my managers were twice my age. Nobody could understand. And they didn't understand and they were looking at, I didn't do that, I didn't do that. It was the way I carried myself. The way I carried myself showed my age in a different way. And some people say, well, you got, a, you got an older person's spirit. You got a spirit of the older. You got, you got you carry yourself like an older man. Because of the maturity, the spirit of maturity was on. Amen. Amen. So your work and the way you operate can speak for you. You ain't really got to speak so much for yourself. Let yourself speak by your works. Yes, sir. The way you carry yourself. See, most people that's always talking about what they've done, what they're doing, all the different things. They said all they want all these activities, they want they want rewards and stuff for that just for saying what they got, what they got did. Let's just walk and let people see what you got going on. You gotta you, you gotta tell nobody what you got. Amen. 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 If you drive a BMW, you ain't gotta tell nobody. Let's go ahead and pull up. <laughs> yeah. I, that. I said it right. Uh, you know, I be here every once in a while. <laughs> Just pull up, right? If, if you have something and if you behave a certain way, you don't have to always tell people, or oh, you need to tell them what you say. Amen. Oh, can I, can I give you Bible for that? Oh, yeah. What happened to Matthew chapter 5? That's good, sir. All right, is that 16 or 15? 5, Matthew 5, 16 or 15? Let your light All right, that's it. Uh -huh. Let your light so shine. What verse is it? 16. 5 and 16, uh huh? Let your light so shine before Let men. Let your light so shine before who? Men. Uh huh. That they may see your good work. That they may see your good work. Uh huh. And glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Ah, see. 
Your words can be seen by men, and you ain't got to say anything. Amen. People say what they have and sell them the things because they ain't never had nothing before. Uh-huh. And somebody always bragging about what they got, they ain't never had nothing before. Amen. And they're not comfortable with having it. They have one. People that brag about stuff they got, they ain't never had one. People brag about all the money they got. Oh, I got plenty of money. I got plenty. You gonna keep saying that you gonna have none of it. Because you're bragging. Oh, I got plenty of money. Yeah, I got plenty of money. Right? People like that, you ain't got money at all. Right? That's why my baby's gonna burn out. Because you run your mouth too much. Right. Right. Don't nobody hate that. Somebody come to them. Somebody come to them. Somebody come to them. Somebody come to them. Amen. So we got to figure out how can we be able to judge ourselves accordingly because, can I be honest with you, everybody in here, and about 60 or 70 of you all in here, everybody in here needs some help. Amen. Yes. 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 In, in every aspect of your life is not perfect. Yes. Yes. God is still working. There's some of y'all, and, 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 and you're so, you know, that mouth is so loose, you'll be quick to say something about somebody else and you're dealing with your own issue. Amen. Oh, did you hear how she said that? She had a good saying that. But you did something like before. Yeah. Just shut your mouth and let the pastor do the job. Right. Oh, amen. Amen. You don't like that. Yeah. Like it. Psalm 139. Come on, everybody lift your hands and say, Lord, I just need you to help me. Psalm 139 and 23. Watch this. Search me. Now, one thing I like about David is that he always wanted God to search him out and to figure out what was going on with him so he could clean himself up. That's right. True. And it's not a lot of people that operate or live their life saying, when, I, when you start praying, you, of course, you're supposed to thank God for everything that you're doing. But a part of that, the beginning part of your prayer, you should be asking God to show you who you are. Lord, search me out. If I got any flaws, show me. Lord, I just want to be right before you. Instead of, you know, worry about everybody else, worry about yourself. All right, search me. Uh-huh. Search me, oh God. Oh God. And know my, my heart. He said, now, I want you to know my heart. Mm-hmm. And you know the Bible talks about wicked things coming out of man's heart. Mm-hmm. Wicked things don't have to get in you. It's all, I mean, they don't have to get in you. It's already in you to come out. Oh my God. That's what the Bible says. All right, read. Try me. Try me. See, we need God. God will start trying us to see if we really what we say we are. Amen. Read. And know my thoughts. He said, I want you to know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. If the, I want you to see, Lord, if there be any wicked. How many of y'all pray like that? Amen. Lord, if there's anything wicked in me, tell me. I, mean, I don't want to be like this. Amen. Some of y'all are so comfortable being nasty that the way you just don't want to ask God to take it all the nastiness, all the nasty attitude, the way I suck my teeth. You don't have much. We have many people preaching like that, or teaching like that, or talking about it like that in prayer. Lord, oh, whatever nasty way that I have. So, and you know you're nasty. Come on. You know you mean. Yes. You know you got a bad attitude. Yes. So you already know. You need to be asking God, I need you to get this out of me. Yes, sir. Yes. Well, that's just who I am. No, you need to change that. I had an attitude ever since I was five. Well, sis, you need to change that. Because you got nasty attitude and all that stuff is in your heart. The Bible said, open a pure heart, so see it. So all that stuff in your heart, that bitterness, that anguish, all that messed up behavior, that got to come out of that. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
you get so comfortable with that. that and let me tell you something, you know, when kids are growing up, you got to check that stuff in. Because what happens is, you let that girl suck her teeth, roll her eyes, and twist her hip, that's how she's going to grow if you don't catch it there. Oh, Lord. Amen, Bible said the train of a child is the way it should go. The way it's supposed to go. When that child starts cutting up and twitching it, and she roll her eyes, and that's the spirit going out that. You can check it. Can I tell you something? Kids are sponges, so they learn behavior. They sure do. Oh, oh, I'm So when kids are watching TV, oh, I'm really about to mess up now. And the girl and the young lady is, you know, popping her hips and, you know, swinging her finger, talking back to her parents. Guess what's going to happen to your daughter? Do the same thing. And that's a behavior that needs to be checked. Yeah. 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 Amen. I know this society don't believe in spare the rod, but the Bible believes it. Yes, yeah. Oh, y'all ain't said nothing. Yeah. Gotta spare the rod and spoil that child. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. And some people behave the way they do because they ain't never had no woman. Lord, have mercy. When I grew up, that's all, that's all, that's all I knew. I, I knew the look that I was going to be. It was a certain look and a certain walk. I was like, okay, we're going to be. <laughs> all right, yo, we try to put composition moves in. <laughs> oh, my dad, he ain't playing. He's going to take it off. I said, take it off. He's going to take everything off. I'm going to take it off. Kids nowadays, they got these bad behavior problems because that wrong correction ain't being in uh, uh, still. Come on. That good level, that, y'all ain't saying nothing. Good level. You did a good one. You did that, not that flimsy one. Don't get that flutter, though. Get that good level. I'll tell you, that, 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 that belt, it about got much power in the name when you mention Jesus. They say devils triple and flee at the name of Jesus. Bodies triple at the name Bell. Say that Bell comes in. Every day he ain't even got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Who's shaking it? <laughs> Y'all ain't saying that. My God. Now to correct those behaviors at a young age. So let those kids get by in their era. Amen. 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 Let those kids get by and their that, that behavior is growing in them. You gotta pay attention because kids, they 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 gravitate to whatever is out. So whatever you showing your child, that's what they're gonna do. Amen. Amen. That's true. Where is Nala at? Nala here? Well, Nala was how old she? She's about three now. Uh, she's two. Two. Oh, All right. Nala, when she was about one years old, she'll go down to the altar and feel that. Yeah. You know why? Because that's what she saw. That's right. So whatever you whatever you demonstrate in front of, in front of a child, that's what they're going to exemplify. That's what they're going to grab hold to. But nowadays, the kids, now you got two year olds twerking and dancing like they're crazy. Oh my God. Yes, they and people talk about, oh, yeah, girl, oh, and they, what do they say now? Hey, oh, yeah, hey. Little baby dancing and shaking, they say, hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then how you pick up on child? Can't we teach kids 
down to twerk. Amen. Set your child up. Amen. So those behaviors grow up in a child, and it depends on how that parent parents That's right. and what they demonstrate to that child. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, where I got you at? Psalm 139. All right. 139 and uh, what was it? 20, uh, uh, what was it? 20, uh, 23, uh huh? Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Search me, and I want you to know my heart. Uh huh? Try me, and know my thoughts. He said, not only do I want you to search me, but I want you to try me. Mm. So if I'm saying that I'm something, Try me to see what I really am. Yes, yes. Mm. You know, you go to the store to buy that teddy bear and they got the try me on it yes, to press to see if it works. Yes, so you talk about God, you don't clean me up, you didn't clean me up. He said, search my heart, see if there's nothing there. And if there's nothing there, go ahead and try me. Mm. Uh, yeah. Why don't you try me? See if it's it. Let, let somebody cut me off on the highway, see if I flick them off and, 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 and cussing at the window and all and looking at them and, and doing all that. Try me, Lord, see. So the devil get us out of some of y'all when y'all be on the road raising. Oh, man, they just cut me off. Uh, and then you flicking them off and you know doing all that and pull up. Come on, pull over here. And you're going to be saved. You said you got rid of that fighting spirit, and then let God, uh, God stand up on that. You said you got that fighting spirit loosed off of you, and then somebody hit you with one of these and we'll see where you at. <laughs> if, you, if, if, if God can try to see, you just let go. I want you to search my heart to find out if my heart is pure as you say it is, as I said it is, and, and if it is, Lord, I want you to try me. God going to start trying something that I'll say if you really say it. Oh, God. You say you don't cuss no more, let somebody cuss you out and see what happens. Yeah. So you don't bite no more, let somebody throw, throw one of them punches back and see what happens. Oh, oh, yeah. Some of y'all are looking for that. Well, don't try me that. I'm not, ready, I'm not ready for that trial. No, no, no. I can't. No, I ain't ready for that one yet. What the Bible said, if you get slapped on your face, you're going to do what? Turn that cheek. Give me some some of y'all need more prayer on that. Yes, sir. That shows that, show that you need to be laying on your face a little longer. If somebody hauled off the slap, how would you feel? Would you, I mean, how would you respond? <laughs> you can ready to kill somebody. You, you even want to slap them back. You was trying to hurt So you got to be careful when you say, look, and y'all be reading songs too every morning. Lord, serve me out. And you, you know, some people read songs, look at songs with good, good books to read at daily. You read this song, talk about try me, Lord. If God try you, see, you fail. You might need to give us a prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Read that again, huh? Search me, Search oh God, me. Uh -huh. and know my heart. I want you to know my heart. Try me. I want you to try me. And know my thoughts. And know my thoughts. And see if there be. Any wicked way in me. I want you to see if there's anything left that's wicked. My God. And lead me in the way everlasting. And I want you to lead me to a different direction. Go to Matthew chapter 15. Let me show you this, and I'm going to get ready to move. I'm sorry. Thank you, Lord. I'll try you for a little bit. All right. All right, sir. You need this. Y'all need it? No, I need yeah. it. Tell me that, because I'll lean on this thing. Y'all need another hour. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, it's all right. I'm leaving that thing for y'all. Be here at four o'clock. All right, Regina, huh? Uh. They came to Jesus. They came right. to Jesus. Uh, Fifteen and uh, what's that? Eight. 
This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth. Oh, uh here, -oh, that's the right one. They draw nigh unto me with their mouth. And honor me with their lips. And honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. Their heart is far from me, huh? But in vain they do worship me, teaching from doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude to and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth that defileth a man. So that's not what you put into that defileth, huh? But that which cometh out of its mouth, this defileth a man. All right, now what's coming out of that mouth, huh? Then came the disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Uh -huh. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind be the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Uh -huh. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entered in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the draw? Uh -huh. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. He said, These things that proceed out of the mouth. And he said, don't be so concerned about what people see. The Pharisees, they, they worry about they, they worried about them eating with dirty hands. Right, right. And Jesus said, no, you, you see, y'all so busy of the outside thing going in. He said, don't worry about the outside coming in. Worry about that stuff that's inside coming out. Amen. Yeah. Read, uh-huh. And they defile the man. Uh-huh. But out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Murders. Murders. Adultery. Uh-huh. Fornications. Thefts. False witness. Blasphemy. Uh-huh. These are the things which the father made. But to eat with unwashed hands, the father not a man. He said, y'all worried about how a man can be defiled? Okay. What defiled is what in his, what's in his heart. And this is why David said, Lord, I want you to search out my heart. If anything yeah. wicked, if there's any murders in my heart, if there's any fornication, any yeah. adultery in my heart, Lord, I want you to take this stuff out of me. Yes, Lord. Take it out. But whatever's unclean, whatever's not like you, Lord, I need you to remove it out of my life. Yes. Yes. Move it out of my will. That should be the prayer. Lord, whatever is not like you, I don't want it in me. We don't pray for stuff like that. We don't pray for materialistic things and be done with it. Amen. How do you plan your life? Are you planning your life according to Lord? Whatever is it be, I don't want it there. Or are you planning it according to everything that's natural? Lord, I want the fancy car. I want the big house. I want all that money. I want all this. I want that. But we're not looking at the spiritual elements. I need a closer walk with you, Lord. And if you ain't never had no close walk with God right now, is the prime time to. Amen. If you never had a good relationship with God, you never had a consistent relationship with God, right now in this hour is not the time to throw in the towel. This is the time to get on the grind even more. Amen. Don't wait for prayer meeting to be called. You go pray. Amen. Yes, Amen. Don't wait for no tearing service. You go tear it. Don't wait for nobody to call you and say, come on, let's pray. Go pray. Yes, sir. We're so caught up on people calling and people saying, let's do, instead of you just going to do. Yeah. You don't need five people to pray. Yeah. Right. Only time you want to pray is when a group of people. Pray by yourself. Right. When you're seeking God, it's good to get in that closet and just fall on your face and say, Lord, show me me. I'm seeking you. Daily, Lord, I need your help. Don't have just a prayer life in front of people. That's not a prayer life. That's a prayer job. A prayer job, you clock in and out. A prayer life, you pray all the time. Amen. Amen. 
Right, got you. All right, now. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go down there to Jeremiah, and I'm about to close. Over to you, man. Thank you, God. Jeremiah 17. And verse number nine. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Come on. I, the Lord, search the heart. So he said that there's a lot of things that's in my heart. He said, who knows the things in my heart? See, the problem is a lot of people got problems inside and nobody knows, but God knows what's going on. You can talk so you can get that stuff out of there. A lot of people probably, I tell, you, I tell people this all the time. I was talking to a young lady and she was saying how she just liked to keep stuff in and wondering why she's going crazy. You're going to go crazy if you keep all that stuff in. You need somebody to talk to. So once God search those things out and show you and identify what's going on inside of you, you need to talk to the man of God to help you. Amen. I just don't like, I don't like talking. I, don't, I just like to deal with it by, by myself. You're going to kill yourself. That's suicide. We wonder why you get all these headaches and all this stuff. You can't even think, right? You're at work, you're drifting off. And because you ain't going to be focused, until you start getting that stuff out of you. Don't you know talking helps? Oh Lord, y'all ain't saying nothing. Talking helps. You try to hold all that stuff in, it's just going to boil and bubble over. And then one person that cuts you off at the supermarket, you put your buggy in front of them, they put their car in front of you, you just blast them. And you try to figure out what happened, what just happened. And because you let all that stuff just build up, and then whoever the innocent bystander is, you just release it on them. Amen? And then sometimes, some of you all are taking on other people's problems. You already got your own problems, you, you listen to somebody else's problems, that stuff will frustrate you and have your mind, you'll be just as crazy. There's somebody outside right now walking around with their no shoes on. Yeah. Walking around. Don't know what's going on. Because of the stress levels. Things that people are mentioning to you. But once those things are searched out and God starts identifying what's wrong with you, you need to speak about it. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong, but I don't know where this, this, this behavior comes from, but such and such and such. How can I get rid of this? How many of y'all know uh, flaws about a family member? Y'all think like y'all read like that? That's all right. All right. Now, you know all the issues with those family members. How many do you know of the flaws that you have within yourself? That's the bigger question. And then, what are you doing with the knowledge of the flaws that you have? Yes. What are you doing with them? Yeah. You just know you got them? You're going to leave them there? Are you going to figure out what's really wrong, Lord? This is what's bothering me. I need to get to the middle of God so he can help me get rid of some of these issues that I have.
Lord, you created us. God, you know us. Please show us. Show us. Show us our flaws. Show us our issues. Lord, we want to know what's going on. Everything that we're battling with. We can hear and see the things that go wrong, wrong in our lives. But we need to help. Lord, don't let us stay. Don't leave out of here the same way we came. Lord, don't let us leave thinking that we got it all together. Every Oh God, we need your help, Jesus. We need your help. 